Fast and accurate typing is valuable only if it can be applied in actual office work for turning out a large quantity of accurately written letters and attractive work. In an office, the typist should know the practical shortcuts and ingenious tricks of the trade. Miss Lenore Fenton, who holds 11 international awards and eight international records in typing and machine transcription, will demonstrate a number of advanced typing techniques. First, let us review a few basic techniques. To turn out a large amount of accurate typewritten work, you must be able to type for long periods without getting tired. Good posture eliminates fatigue. Remember to sit in a comfortable, balanced position, slightly to the right of the center of the machine. Adjust your chair height so that you maintain a continuous upward slope of your forearms and back of hands. Remember to keep your fingers curved and over the home keys. Hit the keys with the rounded tips of the fingers. Use light, fast strokes. Release your fingers quickly from the keys and maintain a steady, rhythmic rate. Use just the amount of energy required to make your typing of uniform blackness with clear carbon copies. On the electromagnetic typewriter, the motor speed automatically makes all impressions of uniform blackness regardless of how hard you hit the keys. Therefore, learn to strike the keys with the minimum necessary energy. Remember to use a fast, continuous motion for returning the carriage. Avoid banging. On the electromagnetic and Burroughs machines, Return the carriage without moving your head out of position over the guide keys. Never type on a bare platen. When typing only one copy or one original copy and one carbon, use a backing sheet, sometimes called a tympan sheet. Don't jerk your paper out of the machine. Always use the paper release lever when removing the paper. Avoid floating capitals by shifting properly. Don't lose your position when you use the shift key. Now let me show you some of the shortcuts and time savers in typing. Arrange your paper, carbon, envelopes, pencils and erasers and other materials so you can get them with a minimum of motion. Paper here. Envelopes where they are easily accessible. Carbon paper here. Extra carbon paper here. Erasers, pencils, and other utensils where they are handy. Always keep these items where you can find them quickly. Keeping things in their allotted places prevents dirty paper, crumpled carbon, lost utensils, and needless searching for things you want when you want them. Proper use of the tabulator stops will simplify your work and save time. The tabulator stop assembly is a mechanism which automatically stops the movement of the carriage at any predetermined position. There are two types of tabulator stops, the automatic and the handset. This is the automatic type. The stops are located at the rear of the carriage and run the full length of the riding line. Tabulator stops are easily set. Move the carriage to the desired position and depress the tabulator set key. When the tabulator set key is depressed, it pushes the stop like this. Do this for each stop desired. The carriage will now halt at each point where the stop has been set. 
Just to press the tabulator key and hold it down until the carriage comes to a stop. Press it down again and the carriage moves to the next stop, and so on. Some machines have a tabulator bar. This serves the same purpose as the key. Use the tabulator stops for writing the date on a letter. Use the tab stops for paragraphing. Also use the tabulator stops for writing columns of numbers. Also use the tabulator stop for the closing. <laughs> to clear any particular tabulator stop, move the carriage to the stop and press the tabulator clear key. This causes the stop at the rear of the machine to return to its normal position. To clear all tabulator stops, move the carriage to the extreme left. Then hold down the tabulator clear key while you move the carriage the full length of the carriage rail. The tabs are now cleared. This applies to the Royal, Underwood, Remington, and Electromatic. On the wood stock, the stops are cleared by using this lever. The L.C. Smith and Burroughs machines have similar levers. This is the handset type of stop. To set these, Place the stops at the desired position. Then move the unused stops to the end of the rack. When the tabulator key is depressed, the carriage will stop at the positions you have set. Clear any stop, remove it by hand and place it at the end of the rack. Some typewriters are equipped with five, six, or even ten decimal tabulator keys. This decimal point key has the same function as the ordinary tabulator bar or key. When tabulating columns of money, this key determines the position of the decimal point. The 1, 10, 100, and 1,000 keys stop the carriage 1, 2, 3, or 4 spaces ahead of the decimal point. This enables you to type quickly various amounts of money in a column without backspacing. 
It also keeps the decimal points properly lined up. For example, to type 25 cents, depress the decimal point key and type the decimal and the number. To type $2.50, depress the one key and type the amount. For $27, depress the 10 key. For $325, depress the 100 key. For $5,000, depress the 1,000 key. Always have a few tabulator stops set in your tabulator rack, even though you are not using them. It prevents this from happening, which is hard on your machine. If you do have a few tabs set, the same accident will only do this. 